Okay, so we're going to get going uh, with exercise 216. Today is very much about building upon what we did last class. Um, so we will end up working in the same file, but I've, uh, I'm actually going to change a little bit how I go through it. I've thought, rethought this exercise, and I want to change a few things in the first part uh, in terms of how I set it up and how I explain it. So hopefully it's a little bit easier to understand. Um, and so anyway, we'll depart a little bit from exactly the order that the handout goes through, but I think it'll make more sense long term if I do it that way. So really what we're, what we're getting to today is we're trying to say, okay, instead of having just the sky where it's the color gradient, today's a perfect day for the color gradient, uh, as opposed to last class where you can actually see how that color gradient happens. Um, we're going to try to evolve that a bit more and we're going to use something called an HDRI or a high dynamic range image as our backdrop. And the advantage here, for those of you that um, took 135 with me, you may remember I talked a lot about high dynamic range imagery uh, and how you would process it and how you would create it. Um, that part of it doesn't matter for our purposes. The uh, part that matters is that these are really high resolution background images that contain a bunch of extra information. So it's not a single set exposure that background can change based on what our sun settings are in a particular scene. And so we're going to get different effects as, uh, as we adjust the sun, etc. So it can work really nicely for our background. The problem with an HDRI is finding and or acquiring good quality ones to begin with. And there's a lot of HDRIs out there that just really aren't very good. Um, I have a series on the website that I've worked with in the past, some of which are okay, some of which are not quite so good. Um, and I've kind of set up some cheat sheets for you regarding these. Um, this is the course website. If you go to resources and you go to the V-Ray quick rendering setups, it will take you to this page. I have a basic day scene one, scene two, scene three, uh, and then I'm starting to work on scene four through about seven. Uh, so I have a bunch more that I'm working on, but they're not quite there yet. Um, so I will get there. Um, when it comes to these background image files, um, there is one source. There's a guy in the Netherlands who uh, creates these files, and they're really, really awesome. And he, in all his uh, niceness, for lack of a better word, um, will give it away for free, though you actually have to go through and complete a purchase to get a license for zero euros. Um, so there's a little bit, you have to do a registration uh, on his website, but it's a great source for some really high quality, high dynamic range images. So um, I would encourage you guys to spend a little bit of time, uh, apparently I can't type it in, right? Let's see if I can get the website correct. There we go. Sorry, I clicked the wrong... Uh, wrong link here. So it's bobgrothius.com if I pronounced it correctly. Um, and if you, he sells prints of his images and, and whatever. They're, they're really, really nice. Uh, he also shows how they're, they're being used in animations and games and, and what have you. So anyway, if you, if you needed a commercial license, you could buy a commercial license for our purposes. Uh, if you go to the shop section here, uh, he has a Dutch free 360. That's what we're going to click on. And then right here under his free collection, this, this, all of these first several are great. So we have uh, 21, 18, 6, 20, 16, 5, uh, and 17. All of those are great background images to get. Um, once you're registered on his particular site, essentially you click on it and you say, I want a free license, add to cart. And you see that the price is at zero euros, so you're not actually paying for anything, uh, but you actually have to go through and check out. It won't make you put in your credit card information or anything like that. It'll let you go through without, without any of the payment information. But it's worth all of these steps. Normally, I don't endorse products or, or make you register for websites or whatever. You can tell that my, by me suggesting that this is a good idea, I really believe that this is a good idea to get them. Uh, I'm going to work through what the actual... Um, correct file setups are for them. I don't have those ready to hand you, but I'm going to show you how you would create it by yourself anyway, because there's a bunch of HDRIs that you could decide you want to use. Furthermore, you could actually take your own HDRI if you had the equipment to do it um, and do it on your specific site. So what happens when you download one of these HDRI files? Uh, he gives us a bunch of information. I have them downloaded in my 
V-Ray folder. And these are all the ones that are from that website that you can get. These are the new ones. The, um, the other ones that I have on the quick rendering setups, the ones here that start um, with day scene one, these were old ones that he used to give away for free and he stopped giving those away and he's replaced them with other ones. Um, so they are here and you could still um, get them. I have direct links for the, you guys to use them, though I'm not legally allowed to distribute them. So you get the idea. Don't, don't share them with anybody. Um, but that'll help you kind of get set up. These other ones down here at the bottom, you can actually go and get them um, for free from him. That would be what I would encourage you to do. So when you download those and you complete the purchase, you'll get a folder. So if I looked at this 005, let's, let's make sure that I'm cross-referencing correctly here. Uh, let's look at uh, let's look at 006. I kind of like that one. We'll do it for 006. So there's 006. If we wanted to see what it looked like, it's a nice sunny sky. There's the sun itself. There's all the clouds. This looks really good. Excellent. We'll use that one. So I'm going to do 006. And when you download 006, right here, he gives us a bunch of information about it one of which is a readme that if you open, it will open Word, unfortunately, um, and it'll give you some information uh, about who he is and, and that sort of thing and, and your license to be able to do it. We can then go into the folder for HDRI, and inside of that we have a bunch of other information. The first thing is recording info under folder 00. If I open that, again we have a Word file and it, he's going to tell us this is the latitude and longitude for his recording. This is the date and time that he took the file. He also has an adjustment for what north is, and I'll explain what that is in just a second. He has his height above the horizon. We're not going to worry about it or use that. And he also has a link for the Google Earth location if you wanted to see where he actually took this particular uh, panorama. So there's a bunch of information that comes with the file that can help you get set up. This latitude and longitude does not match up with the city of San Francisco, obviously. So we need to adapt it for the city of San Francisco. It'll be a different day or time, uh, et cetera. So I'm going to walk through the whole process, but I'll start using his information as we, as we create it. So that was in folder 00 of what he downloaded. The next one is we have a couple different um, subfolders here. If we look at the 11K full resolution, uh, we have two dot hdr files and I'm trying to see what the difference in those two files are sometimes he labels them differently uh, let me look at the Sybil set here in, in folder 003 and yeah here we go here we go this is good so we have one here that's an exr we have another one here that's an EXR. These ones will work nicely. There's a blurry version and a non-blurry version. We're going to end up using both files in a very specific way. If I were to open these in Photoshop, let me go ahead, which by the way is the only program on here that will actually open these files. They're not going to be the most attractive files because they're meant for rendering. Um, so we're not going to, they're not going to be like a beautiful tone mapped uh, high dynamic range image or anything like that. Let's see if it'll open. And there we go. We can kind of see it there in terms of what it is. The other file, this one, if I were to open it, is the same image. but it's a blurry version of it. And so we're looking at essentially the same thing. The difference here is that this is going to be used for global illumination purposes as opposed to the visual backdrop. It's going to be mimicking reflected light, the blue light that comes from the sky, where the sun is, etc. So I'll walk you through how that, how that gets used in a little bit, uh, and I'll come back to these. There's our high resolution version of it right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and instead of opening and starting straight away in my site file from last class, I'm going to just open up a brand new Rhino document. And I'm going to work with this HDRI as a background in this Rhino document. So the first thing that I'll do is I need to create a few things 
to kind of test out this, this rendering and this sky backdrop. So I'll go ahead and I'll create a V-Ray infinite plane. So I'll add a V-Ray infinite plane. And then I'll create a sphere. So we'll click on the uh, sphere. I'll start at 0, 0. And I'll do a diameter of maybe 4 feet or a radius of 4 feet, something like that. Some of my lines are disappeared. Uh, that's because I have the OpenGL problem. So let me go to Tools, Options. And then under View here, we're going to disable that GPU tessellation. And now I see my whole object. So this sphere, if I were to switch into shaded mode for a second, is buried below the ground. I need it to come all the way up out of the ground. So let me move V for vertical. Uh, it'll be two feet. Oops. How about four feet? Let's go two more feet. There we go. So I want that to be sitting up on the ground like that. So what I end up with is I have a sphere, and I have an infinite ground plane. The sphere, I need to be something reflective. Essentially what we're creating is, you guys have seen those lawn ornaments where they have like a mirror ball sitting out on the lawn, and you can see reflections in it? That's what we're creating, because we need to be able to look down on this mirror ball. So I'm going to go ahead and assign a material. I'll bring up the V-Ray Asset Editor here. I'm going to go into the Materials section of the Asset Editor. I'll pull the drawer out to the left side. And I'm going to look for metal. And inside of metal, I'm going to look for chrome. There we go. And I just want basic chrome. So chrome polished would be perfect. I'm going to click and drag that over into my materials list. Then I'll right click on it and say I'm apply material to selection. So I'm only applying it to the sphere. Don't apply it to the ground plane. Make sure that stays as default. OK, so now. I have this set up, and I need to go ahead and set up the sun. And so I could come in here, click on the uh, sun creation panel, and I could come down here to San Francisco, just like we've been doing, like that. And I could pick uh, a day and a time. There we go. OK, that looks good. I could stick it into my scene. We'll say it's 0, 0, 0. And it's there. There's my little light. Ooh, it's really narrow. Let's go ahead and edit that sun. Did a little bit later in the day. There we go, just so it's pointed down. So I have that sun installed. The next part of this is to actually install the HDRI. So you guys have gotten to this part so far. This is no different than what we did last class. This is where it starts to be a little bit different. So I'm going to go ahead and open up that V-Ray Asset Editor here. And I'm going to go into my settings. So I'm going to click the gear icon here. And I'm going to open up the environment drawer down here. So currently, under the environment, we have background. And we have that checkerboard pattern. This looks very familiar so far. Um, if, if you click on that pattern, it should allow you into uh, your bitmap adjustments. If you're struggling to get into it, remember you can always right click on it and say clear. That's what I had to do last class because it wouldn't let me straight in. And then you'll be able to click on it. I'm going to choose, last time we choose, uh, ch choose, great job. I can't even speak today. Uh, last time we chose sky, I'm going to instead choose something called bitmap. Bitmap is essentially, let me go get an image file. So I'll click on Bitmap. And when I've chosen Bitmap, it's going to bring up a uh, dialog box here for me to go find that high dynamic range image. So I had that downloaded on my flash drive. It was in my resources folder within V-Ray, within V-Ray HDRI. And it's right here under 006. There it is. I'm going to enter into the HDRI. I'm going to enter into the Sybil set. And we'll go into there. And I'm going to choose this version. It's the underscore REF, the reference file. And we can see the image right there. I'll go ahead and say open. Now when I bring that in, we see the kind of the preview of it. But I need to adjust a few of the parameters first. So I'll come down here under texture and placement. And instead of type 2D UV channel, 
I'm going to change that to be environment because we're installing an environment. As soon as I do the type to environment, the mapping is going to be spherical, which is the way that I want it. And then I can go ahead and click on back. So I now have a background set up. And if I were to look at this in the top view, straight down on my sphere, I could perform a rendering and have a little look at what it would look like. So let's go ahead and perform that rendering. And so as I look at this rendering, there's a few problems that came up. So I installed the background image, and I'm looking straight down at that sphere. So I'm seeing a reflection of the sky. So imagine that you're out on somebody's lawn with one of those mirror balls, and you're looking straight down at it. We're saying, OK, what is the reflection of the sky? What do I see versus what's rendering? So when I see the picture, I see the sun, but the sun doesn't match up with where the sun I installed was. And we can tell where the sun I installed was was because of that reflection coupled with this shadow. So my sun is over here. So I need to end up moving my sun to match up with that sun. So I'm looking at this visually. Can I guess at it? Absolutely. Could I also adjust my settings based on what he told me? Sure. That would allow it to match up. I'm going to go uh, in two directions. First thing I'll do is to, to guess at it, and then I'll show you how to uh, adjust it from there. So I need the sun to come over uh, to be in the afternoon, and I also need it to be higher in the sky. So I'd come back, select my sun, I'd click Edit. Maybe. Come on now. Oh, I love it when it doesn't do what I want it to do. Let me stop that rendering. There we go. Now let me go into edit. Perfect. I'm going to uncheck manual control, go back to San Francisco again. There we go. I'll come back up here to my day and time. And I want my time to be over a little bit further. And I'm kind of remembering where that sunspot was. My time of year changes the position of the sun. So it's probably right about, maybe a little bit less, right about there. Looks about right. So I'm, again, I'm kind of guessing at it. At that point, I could go ahead and say, OK, and my sun adjusts. And I, then I could go back and perform a render again. It would help if it let me see the frame. Come on. There we go. And so now if I'm looking at my render, my sun is pretty close to the sun in the background. Probably needs to swing over a little bit, but again, that was a guess. So I could go back and adjust right here. Let me stop that rendering. I could go back and adjust this sun by going to edit and pull it around a little bit more. Now, he gave us some specific information about the location and the date and the time to match up. Before I put in the location, the date, and the time, I'm going to pay attention to this north, 0.39. So he's adjusting for where north would be. True north would be based on where the center of his panorama is. So 0.39, we'd have to do a little bit of a calculation. If we do 0 0.39, 0 0.39 times 360, it would be about 140.4 degrees would get us to 0.39. So I'm going to come in here and adjust the background. So I'll go into my settings here. I'll click on this under texture and placement. My rotate H right there would be 140.4. Oops. That's what he's adjusting for from where the center of the image is. So I've rotated the panorama around that particular point. I can then go ahead and say back. And so when, when and or if I went back to my render here, come on, frame buffer. Here we go. We can see that the, the 
background image has changed where the sun is, has rotated. And again, we're just compensating for what, um, what he said in his compensation. So let me stop that rotation. Okay. Now I can reset the sun. So I'll go back into edit. I'll uncheck manual control. And instead of picking San Francisco, I can come down here and I can type in the latitude and longitude that he's giving me. So there's my latitude. I'll copy it. And then I'll go to my longitude. Copy it. There's my longitude. So there he is in the Netherlands. That's good. We'll scroll up here. And he also gave me a date and a time. Oops, too far. And so we'll go back to his file. Uh, there's his date and his time. It's at 11.50 a.m. and it's on the 17th of uh, July in uh, 2010. So I'll come back here. And so this was 7, 17, 2010. It was at 11.50 AM. So all of that set. He also mentions in his little word file that he's not sure about the daylight savings, whether it was on or off. So we'll have to do a test and, and double check. So with those two settings correct, I can go ahead and say, OK. <coughs> it will adjust my sun. And now when I go back and render, it should match up. OK, it's not matching up. That probably means the daylight savings time was off. So I'd have to go back and adjust for that daylight savings. Let me edit that sun again. And I go back through and put the rest of this in. Uh, let's see here. Bear with me. You can tell that it's a lot easier to type in San Francisco than to actually have to copy and paste the, the latitude and longitude. There we go. 7, 17, 2010, 11, 50. Daylight savings time is turned on. That adjusts, that adjusts our time a little bit. That looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and say OK. That then adjusts my sun. And then I can re-render. And interestingly enough, I'm still off. So I don't know. Maybe, he, maybe his numbers were a little off. Uh, but you get the idea where I'm trying to match the two up. Okay. So in this case, um, I'm not quite sure. I must have put in the rotation wrong. Maybe it was negative. Let's try that. Nope, definitely wasn't negative. Um, so I apologize. Somehow I got off on that rotation. So. Let's take, uh, let's do it at like 120. And I'll try that. All right, I'm pretty darn close. Stop it. Let me go back to my um, settings here. A little bit less, it's about 110, and we'll give that one a shot. So I'm going to go ahead and keep moving on with some more settings. We'll come back and make that adjustment as necessary. So I have this as my background. I'm going to end up with clouds in the sky. My sun matches up to that particular, that particular location. Um, I could uh, make a note and adjust for the city of San Francisco if I wanted to uh, basically, let me just 
open that so I can explain it. Uh, the, I know what the sun settings are, and so I could write down the azimuth and the altitude, then I could change my location to San Francisco and adjust the date and time until it matched up with the azimuth and the altitude. So I know where the sun's supposed to be. It's probably too much work. All we're trying to do is get the, the sky to match up with the sun. That's the important piece. And you can do it by guessing. You can also do it um, by putting in his technical information. Again, I'm not quite sure why it didn't line up. The one that I did, it wasn't this particular file. It lined up perfectly. As soon as I set it up, uh, the sun was perfect. So not quite sure what's going on there. Anyway, so I have the background set. The next one is I'm going to expand where it says environmental overrides. And I'm going to change this GI skylight. This is the global illumination that's coming from the sky. So we have a source of light that is the sun. Obviously, that's our primary source of light. But we have a secondary source of light, and that is the light that's reflected off of things in the sky. When it's a, a day like today where there's not a cloud in the sky, there's a little bit of blue light re that's reflected, but it's not too much. But if you imagine a dynamic sky where there's a bunch of clouds, there's going to be some bright patches of reflection coming from those clouds. And we want to be able to mimic those uh, as well. So this GI skylight allows us to do that. And this is where we're going to look for that blurry file. It's the same file as this, but it's the blurry version. And if there was more sky, see there's like a light patch that would be reflecting. So I'm going to go right here, click this little checkerboard pattern. I'm going to choose bitmap. And I'm going to go find the env file for environment. And we'll go ahead and say, OK. I need to change under texture placement. I need to change the channel to environment. And I need to change the horizontal rotation to match. I did it at 110. I'll go ahead and click on back. Now a couple more things. We can change what the background looks like in the rendering we can essentially make the background lighter by increasing this number. And chances are it's going to have to increase a little bit. Likewise, we could change how much reflected light is in a scene by increasing that number there. So sometimes we need to set up an actual render to kind of see what happens. Before we can do that, we need to make sure that our camera is turned on. So right here under the camera drawer, I'm going to make sure that the camera is on, which it is. My exposure value is currently set for 10. My guess is that this is going to have to go up somewhere in the neighborhood of about 14, given the scene. That's just a, a hunch. So I'll change that up. I'll close this. I'm going to switch out of the top view and into the perspective view here. We'll get down more at eye level to kind of look at this, and we'll do a test render. So I'll go ahead and click on the render button. And so as this starts to build up, we can say, OK, well, the, the background's way too dark. So I need to increase that background. That's where we would go in. I'm going to stop this render right here under Environment. And we change and lighten up the background. So I'm going to take the background here, and I'm going to lighten it up. I'm going to go to about 20, and we'll see what happens. I'll leave the GI skylight the same, and we'll go ahead and start the render again. So you can see just by changing that, I've really lightened that background up. That may or may not be light enough. If it's light enough, I'll leave it. If it's not, I'd go back to my asset editor here, and I'd change that to maybe 30. Start the render again. And that feels about right. So when I write up the settings, if you go back to my uh, render settings, I'll include a background value for what I think the background value should be. Um, so there it is. Reflection, refraction, background. And it varies based on the, the file itself. So like this one is at 18. I also, on the ones that uh, are here, I've also given you a date and time that lines up. You could create it yourself, obviously, depending on which one. And again, I don't have all of them there as well. OK. So like this one here. Um, this is scene 005. I was in the process of working through it with my horizontal rotation. And here's the accurate location from his. And this is adapted for San Francisco that gives it a date <coughs> and a time where it matches up. <coughs> Sorry. Exposure value at 14 there. OK, so now that I have all of these settings correct and I like what it's looking like, I need to save these environmental settings and then bring them into my scene my San Francisco city scene. 
So I'm going to, in the V-Ray Asset Editor here, still under the Settings tab, I'm going to come all the way down to the bottom, and there's a disk icon. Save Render Settings to File. So I'll go ahead and click on that. Actually, I'm going to turn on the Swarm too before I save them to file. I'll click on the Save to File. It brings up a dialog box for me to save this. I'm going to save it inside of my Resources folder, inside of V-Ray, and inside of the specific HDRI file. So I was working with 006, so we'll save it here. I could give it a name and then click on Save. So that saves all the settings that I just went through. I can then jump over into my actual rendering scene here, which I already have open. I'll open my V-Ray Asset Editor. I'll click on my settings. And from here, I'll go ahead and load render settings from file. There it is. Uh, I need to come over here. Let's see here. There it was. I'll go ahead and click on open. And it will load all of my settings in. If I click on environment here, there was my 30. If I clicked on here, my bitmap should show up. There it was. So everything should load correctly. It's possible that if you saved it and then you closed the computer and you went back, you went to a different computer and you came back, if your drive letter changes on where your hard drive's plugged in, it might not know where this bitmap file is, in which case you might have to go find it again. That's, that's just one of the caveats there. So once I have all the settings set, which they are, they're all saved for me, I can go back to my actual render. Uh, we do need to go back to the render output. We worked on this last time. Uh, remember, this aspect ratio is off, so we'll go back to custom, and we'll say this was, uh, I forget what it was, point, 0.25 to 1, something like that. We'll do a small test render, see if we like it. I'll go ahead and click on the render button. We'll give it a second. And there we go. So it's starting to render out. Now in this example, unlike the last sky that we had, you can see on the building we're getting reflections of those clouds. And that's really what takes the renderings to the next level. That's what makes them start to look realistic and to get the realistic reflections because we're actually getting clouds in the sky. So HDRIs are, are really important for the daytime renders for your backdrops. Uh, and so high quality ones like this one are, are really worth your time to go find and to go get. Um, sometimes in the files, and even some of um, the Bob Grothius ones, the, you'll see that all of these ones in the beginning that I suggested that you download, when you click on them and you look at the file itself like this, you could see that the horizon doesn't have anything sticking up in it. Well, in that case, there's a little bit of that orange line that's sticking up. Oh no, those are just his, uh, his notes on top of it. Uh, and so, that's a good file to use as your HDRI. Some of the other ones, come down here. So I could use this one as an example. We could use this file as an HDRI, but it's got buildings in the way. So we, when we render, we would see those buildings on either side. So it's less than ideal. So the best ones are the ones without anything on the horizon so that you just get the sky. Uh, and then you rely on your building and what's the context around it to, to not see the rest of it. So these are some really good files. I would suggest you go through and download them. I'm going to keep working and get the, the rest of the settings set up for you so you can use those. Ultimately, I'll have the actual um, files that save all the settings so you can load them, load them straight in. To, so your V-Ray settings files, but I haven't gotten there yet. Um, that's a new update for the new version, so I have to create new ones. Um, based on that. So that's what you're doing today in terms of actually getting a high quality render. Okay, this, the rendering is kind of blurry. So now that I've confirmed that it looks good, my clouds are showing, my sky looks right, my exposure looks right in the scene, all of those guesses were correct. I go ahead and stop this. I'll go back to my settings here and under my render output, I'm going to increase this. So this probably should be at least a thousand. 
If I have enough time for this render, I might actually increase this one up, maybe at 500, like that. I can also increase the quality all the way up to very high, and then I can run my render again. And so again, this takes a little bit longer. Renders take time. So once you get it ready, you render and you work on some other project. And we're going to be coming up pretty soon. We'll get you started on your final project of the semester, so you'll always have something else to be working on while these renders go through. All right, I know it's a lot of information to take in. There are tutorials written out on the course website. So if you, if you feel a little bit lost, if you go into V-Ray um, HDRI right here, we'll talk you through how those HDRIs are loaded, like that, and where the settings are, et cetera. Okay, so if you get a little bit lost, you can go look at those as well. Are there any questions? Yeah. Uh, when you save all the, the, the settings, yes, it used to be a VizOpt, and I have to double check what the new version uh, is calling it now. It's a VROPT. Um, the, the last one used to be VizOpt, so they've changed the, the extensions, though the old VizOpt would still work. Um, this is all the settings in your um, render engine, so you're essentially able to copy them from one file to another file, which is the big advantage. Once you have it set the way you like it, then you can load it. Furthermore, if you change day, night, etc., you can save these and then reload them and use them as you change your rendering. And then to load them, you uh, just load files? Right, you would click this little folder icon. Let me cancel this for a second. You click this little folder icon and then go find that file. Uh, so there was the one that I just had. Uh, and then you just click open and it'll load all those settings back in. Any other questions? No? All right.